Alrighty everyone, welcome back. It is now March 19th of 2024. Now, when we take a close look at the Walt Disney Company, I think it's very fair to say that Lucasfilm is absolutely the most failed division even above Marvel Studios for one reason in particular. It doesn't necessarily have to do with box office failures or anything like that that Marvel Studios went through. That's one thing. But with Lucasfilm, they always announce titles, and then those said titles that were announced either get cancelled or fall into production limbo, they never get a release date, and no updates really come along with those projects, and it's a rinse and repeat process that's been happening since 2017. This is all a Kathleen Kennedy problem, this is all as well as a Bob Iger issue. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. You can also follow me at Mike Zero One. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. So, Star Wars director and showrunner Leslie Headland. You guys may or may not know who she is, but we've been talking about her for quite a number of years now, actually, since the Acolyte was announced quite a while back. And by the way, this is dropping officially on June 4th on Disney Plus, and already it's sounding to be quite a bit of a mess, all right? We already know that Leslie Headland has said endlessly that she does not support George Lucas's philosophy of Star Wars, nor does she support the fans of George Lucas's Star Wars. She wanted to do something for either new fans or fans that are willing to change and adapt to her, her overall storytelling techniques. So let's get into all of this, shall we? Now, one thing about Leslie Headland that I think a lot of people need to be aware of is that she has made this openly clear before in the past that the Acolyte will be a combination of The Matrix, Kill Bill, Frozen meets Star Wars, which sounds very odd and strange to begin with. However, with Star Wars director and showrunner already beginning to promote the Acolyte series ahead of its June 4th release date, and of course the trailer is set to drop today, one major development involves her response to the fandom and those that remain, of course, fans of the George Lucas philosophy of the franchise. Leslie went on to deliver the following. Well, as a woman, I think it was important for everyone here at Lucasfilm to accomplish one goal, and that was to create a series that was mainly dedicated to women. One thing myself and Kathleen Kennedy agreed on was that we seriously had to cut ties with Lucas's vision of the franchise in order for us to explore something new and useful to our audience, and for newcomers as well that have never seen Star Wars. It was important for us to explore options to rewrite parts of that philosophy that so many fans grew up with. And of course, along with that, you are always going to get naysayers that will be very loud and toxic that will never respect your vision. I think Star Wars will always be a franchise susceptible to fans that feel entitled to the movies and shows as if it belongs to them. But in reality, it belongs to creators like myself to tell these, to tell these stories. Like Star Wars saved my life, okay? and I was able to reflect that into this show. As one who supports feminism, this is the core of the show that I think men should really appreciate, and if they don't, I think it just proves that it's time we adapt to the modern world. And hopefully the Acolyte will help with that. I have such a wonderful cast that comes from different backgrounds, genders, and ethnicities, and diversity was our number one priority with this story. I grew up with many hit films, but one of the later hits that I used for a template in this show was The Matrix, and it's why I decided to hire Carrie Ann Moss, and Kathleen loved the idea. This series will it will actually strip the rules of what George applied years ago. I think fans will love this story since it's a mashup of many movies over the decades, with Star Wars wrapped around all of that for the theming, and it's going to be incredible. Quite frankly, and it's going to be something that will leave a bigger impact than what Revenge of the Sith did back in 2005. I just think we are going to deal with loud, biased opinions that are going to get in the way for a while of a section of the core fan base that's afraid of an all-female-led cast. I mean, this is something that was long overdue, and I couldn't be more excited about all of that. We plan on really expanding this show and making this the true focus of Star Wars eventually. The Force truly is female in this show. The Acolyte holds so many twists and turns that it will go back to the prequels and make you watch them differently because we decided to change pieces of history that we felt needed changing. Of course, some hardcore fans are going to have a problem with that, but I think those are the type of fans that need to adapt to, once again, the modern world and realize that our aim is to normalize our way of developing these stories moving forward. 
Now guys, before I get to the big conclusion, let me just stop here real quick. Whenever someone says modernize or normalize or anything like that, when you're actually talking about adapting to change and shifting away from a traditional philosophy of a hit series or a show or a movie, for example, by a major creator, it just goes to show you that they don't respect the source material and they don't respect people like George Lucas at all. So she's openly admitting that this show is not going to be for fans that grew up with the originals or the prequels or anything like that. Of course, you know, people are going to run to the show hoping that Darth Plagueis is going to be in it because it takes place before The Phantom Menace. Actually, it takes numerous years before The Phantom Menace. So you have a lot of fans that are just crossing their fingers that something like that is going to happen. Don't expect anything too crazy like that to happen in the Acolyte because we have seen time and time again with Star Wars and their track record that any kind of major expectation like that falls flat. So when you look at stuff like this with the Acolyte, the fact that they're on this constant trope of it was made by women for women and how that was the number one priority was diversity. They don't talk about story, they don't talk about character development, they don't talk about the writing, the directing, the producing of this series. They're really tightly focused on the agenda. And I think that's what truly worries a lot of fans, or whatever's left of the fans, that are still hanging on to hope about where Star Wars is going. Now look, the poster dropped just yesterday, and I thought it was quite hilarious in certain ways and you guys probably know exactly what I'm talking about about what type of jokes are going along with that poster I get it the blood with the saber is to indicate that this show is going to be so edgy and dark and you know stuff like that to kind of gravitate toward a hardcore audience already a lot of fans are beginning to agree with me that the poster most likely will outperform itself against the actual show that the poster will be better than the series, essentially. Now, moving onwards, she concludes, if you are a fan of George, I think it's time for fans to realize that it was time to leave his work behind on this project. Myself and Kathy felt it was necessary to not allow him on set when filming this show to shift away from that presence of Star Wars and to embrace something new for old and new fans. The Acolyte truly is a game changer for this fandom. Again, I mean, there we have it. Not allowing George on set makes a lot of sense, by the way, why there were no BTS, uh, you know, still images releasing for the Acolyte like traditional shows did with The Mandalorian Season 1 and Season 2. And without George on set, I think that's also a very big problem because you're not getting any kind of supervision. You're not getting any kind of direction of what should be done here and there. Again, when it comes to Star Wars, guys, even the little things count very, very significantly. And it's what makes Star Wars Star Wars. You gotta really pay close attention to what truly makes it into an actual, you know, uh, philosophy by George. So overall, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Fill me in below in the comments what you all have to say about this. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys later. And